Well, after years of packing on household debt, Canadians are finally, appearing so anyways, to reverse the trend and taking maybe a baby step towards financial fitness. The latest numbers peg the average debt load at 168%. That means a typical family owes a dollar 68 cents for every dollar earned. That is a two-year low. Mortgage borrowing fell to its lowest level in around three years. The drop comes as tighter lending rules and higher mortgage rates cool the housing market. The result has been a dip in Ontario home prices, something the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation does not expect to see last. It sees prices returning to where they were at the end of last year. Join us now for more on all of this. Brett House, Deputy Chief Economist at Scotiabank. So, 168%, we got this debt problem solved, right? Uh, not quite. Not so much. Uh, it's still a historic high level, uh, but just slightly off, off the peak that we recently saw. And what it does is show that there is maybe a constellation of policy measures that have been put into place. They're starting to have an impact on the way Canadians think about debt and make their household financial decisions. The numbers, and I mean, people have been telling us this for years, but the numbers when you actually look at them writ large are frankly astounding. We owe a total of nearly $2 trillion equal to Canada's gross domestic product. Households borrowed $22.2 billion in the first quarter, which is down from $25.4 billion in the preceding quarter. These, these are staggering sums of money. Uh, so to get them even a little bit under control, I guess, is good news. How much of this is simply the mortgage situation, and how much of it is it people stopping to spend as much? Uh, it, it, it's a constellation of things, as I mentioned. Right. So there are the tighter mortgage rules, which right. require people to put more money down and show that they can sustain a mortgage at much higher interest rates, 2% above the current prevailing rates. At the same time, you've had interest rates increasing from the Bank of Canada and clear signals that they're likely to continue doing so. And right. I think people are taking that to heart. Um, and at the same time, you know, you are seeing what is possible a larger rotation in the sources of growth in the Canadian economy. So consumption by households and real estate investment have driven a lot of Canadian growth over the last few years. The first quarter showed that we're starting to see the baton passed a little bit to business investment and what we hope next is exports. Right, because for so long there, it was the Canadian consumer that sort of put the GDP on our back and marched it up a very steep hill. It's nice to be able to spread that risk around a little yeah. bit. Uh, the CMHC, though, says this, this dip in housing prices isn't going to last. Will we, are we destined to go back to that exact same spot where we're over leveraged and we're back up? Like, I mean, 170%, 169 and change, that's a, that, that's a scary level. Are we destined to go back there if housing prices go? Well, we're likely to hang out in that neighborhood for some time, uh, but what we hope is that this is the beginning of an inflection point where it starts coming down as households start reducing their debt burdens. And, you know, what is going to help on that front is wages are increasing at right. the highest rates that we've seen in a number of years. And so as incomes go up, we're hopeful that some of that is going to be allocated to debt reduction. And that shouldn't put a dent in growth if we do indeed see business picking up the baton again with investment right. and exports. The other thing to contextualize here is that is an incredible debt burden, but when you set it against assets right. rather than annual post-tax income, it looks a lot more manageable. Uh, we are at lows uh, when we compare it to assets for about the last 28 years. Is so our asset growth is really compensated for some of that debt growth. It's funny though, I listen to you talk and it's, well maybe wages will go up and that'll help and these policy moves that we've seen from various levels of government have driven things down and that's obviously helped. None of it is, wow, the Canadian consumer finally woke up and said, this is unhealthy for me and for my family, I need to get my fiscal house in order. Has that message really gotten through to Canadians that, that not all debt is good debt and to try to keep it under control a little bit better? Well, I mean, the headlines scream it almost every week. Every week, week and people just ignore it outright. Well, I don't know that they ignore it. Really? Maybe this is the beginning of it, it really taking hold. But, you know, what I would emphasize is that in terms of systemic risk to the economy, it looks a lot better right. than, you know, that one headline number against personal disposable income implies. Because when we look at it against assets, when we look at it against loan-to-value ratios in homes, when we look at the very strong equity values that Canadians have in their real estate right. holdings, right. And the fact that, you know, more than 50% of Canadian households don't have mortgages and don't have HELOCs, they are reasonably well insulated against the uh, interest rate increases that we're seeing and about to see. So overall, I think we're getting a constellation of really good numbers coming together. Thank you, Brett House, the optimist. I'd like to have you come in and tell us that we're not such a d dire straits after all. I mean, we're not always dismal scientists. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks for doing this. Brett Good House, Deputy Chief Economist at Scotiabank.